Alrighty, Fight Fans, my name is Nick Peralta and welcome to the third episode of Puncher's Chance. we got a lot of questions rolling in for this one, so let me go ahead and run through a couple of big topics from this week and then we'll get right to those. UFC 205 gets one of the most stacked cards in history and is headlined by Eddie Alvarez versus Conor McGregor for the UFC lightweight title. God damn! Oh, holy hell, what a card. Just so many great fights, you know? Just Cerrone, Gaslam, Edgar Stevens, uh, Weidman Romero. You have Alves making his lightweight debut uh, against Jim Miller, Rashad Evans, Misha Tate. Oh, I love it. So let's cut to uh, one quick chase, though. Oh, man, Conor McGregor isn't defending the title. Listen, I can understand why uh, why this bumps people out, you know, and because of that, it makes uh, you know it, it makes it hard for people to look at this fight like a super fight, considering you have two champions fighting in the main event. It certainly doesn't help that Conor is about to fight in his third fight uh, away from the class that he's the champion of. I mean, seriously, what a dork! I mean, it, it makes it almost you know painfully obvious that he just does not desire to compete at that weight class anymore. So I mean, I think if he defeats Eddie Alvarez uh, and becomes a lightweight champion, he'll drop the belt for sure. And, I mean, what what incentive does he really ever have to go back down there again? And I mean, what possible excuse could Dana give us that the masses would be willing to accept after that? However, say if Connor does lose this fight to Eddie. What then does he have? Oh, look at here, featherweight championship belt. Then he still keeps that belt. You know what I mean? And can continue making millions at featherweight, a weight class he basically backlogged for over a year at this point. And speaking of featherweight, Jose Aldo asked to be released from the UFC. Well, <laughs> see, you done messed up, UFC. Jose Aldo has been promised multiple things that just did not pan out. He was promised an immediate rematch after UFC 194. Didn't happen. He was promised to fight with Connor after UFC 196. Didn't happen. And, and now just recently, he was promised openly by Dana that he would fight Connor at UFC 205. Didn't happen. Clearly a pattern here. And also, the, the trust well with Dana and Jose Aldo has run pretty dry. Man, Dana just cannot be straight up with this dude. I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate. And now the interim featherweight champ, a champion of the UFC uh, from when the featherweight division even came into the UFC, is now saying he wants to leave. Leave! And many are thinking, okay, it could just be him being hot-headed, he's just saying this to get attention or to, you know, it's a, it's a bargaining chip. But he's been saying this all week and he's been getting more and more serious. I, I really don't think he's messing around this time. I mean, it, it's such a, like, it's such a crazy thing. This may honestly be, to me, one of the craziest stories going on in MMA right now. And just so we're clear, and he's made it pretty clear, that he, he doesn't want out of just the UFC. He wants out of MMA, period. That's just wild. You know, and all the while, even da even Dana is thinking like, ah, oh, he'll get over it. He'll get over it. You know, yet now, Jose is talking about suing the UFC and saying that he'll start just talking all this shit until they let him go. I mean, what does the UFC even do from here? Promise him a title fight with Conor McGregor for the fourth time? I mean, how's he, how, how's he supposed to believe you? Clearly, Aldo is ready to cut the switch on his MMA career. This is a huge gamble. I don't think that he'd be willing to simply say all this stuff if he wasn't willing to walk away from the sport. Uh, and, you know, say, simply saying, yeah, I'm retired and I need out of my contract so I can compete in a different sport altogether, that's huge. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't even know what the UFC can do at this point uh, to keep Aldo. You know, I mean, I'm sure they, they've got to do something to bargain him to stay, if they even want him to stay. Who knows? I mean, the, the treatment that they've had with Aldo has clearly shown that they don't entirely value him as much as maybe he would like for as much as he's done for not only the UFC, but MMA, period. Um, but this is definitely a story I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on. Jay Abel asks, okay, so if Pride FC can do 100,000 people in an event, how come the UFC hasn't been able to hit that peak? I mean, WWE hit that peak at WrestleMania this year, so why hasn't the UFC? Also, if Pride FC was still around, do you believe that if another company bought it, would it be bigger than the UFC at the moment? Keep in mind, before the sale, Pride FC was airing on Fox Sports. Okay, you know, hey, solid question. I like it. 
I mean, Japan has such a different audience. You know, I mean, it, I mean, if uh, if you think about Japan, uh, that country really is its own specific type of community, like a singular community. That country, Japan, just you know, martial arts is ingrained um, in into its culture. The thing with Japan is that it, 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 you know, its citizens largely believe that martial arts is a large and a sacred part of their history. Now, here in North America, way different, you know, especially in the United States, where I mean, we're a bunch of different cultures, communities, societies, um, identities that all love and enjoy many different things. But in Japan, they almost universally enjoy uh, martial arts and combat sports. Um, and hence why it, it, uh, it could sell out the Saitama Super Arena on the regular. Uh, great question, though. Great. Trent Singano Whiskey Jack asked, Do you think Cody Garbrandt deserves the next title shot? Trent Singano Whiskey Jack. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's an awesome name. I mean, uh, I don't believe it's real, but I'm a fan. You know, me personally, uh, I wish to see Dillashaw get back in there, rematch Cruz. Um, you know, I, it, it was such a close fight the first time around. It really was a very close fight. Um, and he just beat Rafael Sansao, who in my mind was the next guy in line. Um, but, you know, injuries kept sidelining him and TJ, uh, you know, so then Cruz was able to get in there, no problem. Um, and I do believe on paper that's a much more um, impressive win than Cody's last win uh, against Mizugaki. But if Cody does get the next title shot, I wouldn't be bothered by it one bit. You know, I mean, that dude has some scary power, scary power, and, and, and could easily give Cruz some problems in the earlier rounds of that type of fight. Can he last the full five rounds? We've not even seen him go past the third, so it's, it's very hard to tell. Um, but, I mean, if he lands early and often, that, that he could really give Cruz some problems. That would be a fun fight. Well, you know, we'll see. I mean, if Cody gets the next title shot, like I said, wouldn't be bothered by it one bit. Um, you won't hear me complaining. Either of those two guys are certainly next. I can't imagine anybody else besides those two gets the next shot. Whoever Cruz fights next, he's got a tough fight ahead of him. Alejandro Nieto asks, do you think Carlos Condit still has a chance to become champion? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be brutally honest. At this point, no. No, I do not. And let me just say this, though, first. You know, I I really did believe, I do believe, that Condit beat Robbie Lawler at UFC 195 at the beginning of this year. I do think that he should have walked away from that fight, the UFC welterweight champion. It was a close fight, though. I mean, you, you tell me. Who do you think won that fight? Let me know in the comments below. I, would, I, would, I certainly want to hear your guys' opinion on that one. Regardless of that, no, I, I don't think he can now. I mean, his mental fortitude is all but gone at this point. I mean, he may not even fight again. And to be thinking about retirement means that he's now past the threshold that certain fighters just don't ever come back from. Um, and, and they certainly don't come back to compete against the best from the world. Sadly, that's the case here with Condit. But I mean, if he did choose to retire, uh, man, my goodness, uh, you know, I mean, what a career he's had. And I will have been very grateful to the Natural Born Killer for, for all the memories. Jamal West Craven Weston asks, Rashad Evans at 185, any chance my boy will body the division? Inside joke, I feel like Anthony Brancato may have uh, hacked this dude's account. Okay. <laughs> so this first fight uh, here at middleweight against Tim Kennedy at UFC 205 is going to be very foretelling. It's going to be a chance to see how Rashad handles this weight cut, if he's, you know, faster, stronger, weaker, slower. I mean, time's going to tell on this one, you know, I mean, it w because while he wasn't the biggest light heavyweight, you know, uh, he was certainly by no means ever you know, carrying this extra weight or he looked flabby or fat, you know, he was already in terrific shape at 205, so for him to shave 20 pounds off, God, that sounds like that's almost brutal, you know? Uh, he has to cut the weight properly and uh, the, and he has to have discipline in that process you know and, and that may be what Evans needs to find that motivation to be successful inside the octagon again but it can also be very detrimental to him you know uh, what if he can't handle it and like I said before this is going to be a very telling fight um, against Tim Kennedy at UFC 205 
I, you know, I'm very much looking forward to it. I really want to see if this is the weight class that Rashad should have been all along and how he looks, how his body looks. Um, at the very end of the day, uh, can he be successful in this weight class? And so many questions that this fight will certainly answer. Tim Kennedy is certainly no joke. And at the same time, Kennedy hasn't fought in God knows how long. I think it's been... I think UFC 184 might might be. That's just a guess, but uh, that might have been the last time he fought. It's been a while. It certainly feels like it's been what, almost two years. Maybe not two years yet. Um, I definitely gotta go fact check. But I certainly know it was against Yoel Romero, and that was certainly a fight that was a very long time ago. He's been keeping busy doing his own thing, doing so many other things, uh, um, you know, like on TV and, and stuff like that. So to come back from that, how's Tim also gonna look? Um, because the way he looks may also kind of cloud how Rashad looks because this isn't a competitor that's just coming right off of an amazing win or, or even a competitive loss and coming right back into the cage. So altogether, very, very, very telling fight for both men, really. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. I, I want to thank everybody, all the great fans that sent me a bunch of questions. I really did get quite a lot of them, and uh, it sucks because if I, I would have liked to put them all on here. There's so many great topics, uh, but then this video would have been an hour long. So um, I'm, I will try to get back into live streaming for uh, either from Facebook or maybe from YouTube if I can start getting more of a following there. Which, by the way, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a like, comment, subscribe, go ahead and share, all that such. And uh, it's always appreciated, guys. I, uh, I love listening to you guys very much, talking to you on the Facebook page, MMA Discussion, or MMAOutsiders.com, or that Facebook page. I'm starting to talk to some people on YouTube. Uh, it's great. So I appreciate you guys, uh, uh, your support, everything that's been going on. And this Saturday, don't forget to check out UFC Fight Night going down in Portland, Oregon. It will be headlined by John Lineker and John Dawson. Dude, what a fight that is. I love that fight. That's a tough one to call. Two dudes with power, amazing speed. Um, one of them could not give a hell about trying to get into the pocket with you and brawling. And the other one is all off the walls, man. So it's going to be a great, great, great fight. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Um, and until next time, next week, I will see you on the fourth episode of Puncher's Chance. Later.